Hello! In this video, we're going to walk you through Thea, which is an app that we began to develop as part of the GIM Senior Capstone class as a method of wayfinding for the blind and visually impaired. We tried to develop Thea as an alternative to some current solutions, um, including an app called Ira, which you can see Diana from the Idaho Access Project is using here. Ira connects the users to guides uh, who they talk with live. Um, and, and those guides are able to use the cameras on their phone to guide them through the room. But one of the big problems is that these guides may not be familiar ahead of time with the locations that they're guiding the user through. Um, and in this case, the guide had to lead Diana in circles before they were able to eventually lead her to the elevator. Here again, the operator didn't see that those entries, um, that those openings between the columns are actually glass. And so it took them quite a bit to lead Diana in the right direction. And that can be really confusing for someone who's visually impaired as they may lose their bearings and have less of an understanding of where they are in the environment. So when we designed Thea, we decided we wanted a system that first of all was autonomous that wouldn't require um, having an operator on the other end and um, that also was aware of the space um, that would be able to provide directions that are customized so that the user didn't have to go in circles a lot. How we decided to approach this was using Bluetooth beacons, which um, we set up a prototype of in the Albertsons library, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but these beacons are able to get an accurate positioning of the user in the room so that directions can be dynamically generated based on where they are. But first, before going into that, we're going to talk a little bit about the user interface that we developed and the accessibility features for that. All right, so this is Thea. This is our digital wayfinding project that we've been working on. And so I'm going to give you a quick run through of the app in its current state, what we have, the functionality, and where it can be built on down the road. So when you start Thea, you are presented with an authentication screen. Right now, we just have a login button, but we have the framework and the code all in there to run some sort of authentication process that would authenticate the certain user of the app. But right now, we can just hit login. So initially, you're presented with the directions page. So this is kind of the home page for starting your navigation. You can see up here, we have an add bookmark button, which pops up a modal that covers the whole screen to reduce confusion. And then this is where you'd be able to add a bookmark. We also have a sort bookmark button that uses a radio button picker to help select which one you want to sort by. You can sort by alphabetical, by distance, by most visited, and then by the most recent visited location. So initially we had a picker item here, which would kind of pop up at the bottom of the screen and then still leave the existing screen remaining. And we found this ran into a lot of issues with accessibility, specifically using a screen reader. So we changed it to radio buttons and found that that works much better. The modal covers the whole screen so that there's no confusion there. And so the cool part about the sort feature is that the functionality is actually working. So if I select alphabetically, then our locations are now sorted alphabetically. I can filter, I can remove bookmarks, and then I can also favorite and unfavorite bookmarks. So that functionality is all there. While the actual location wayfinding beacon functionality isn't in there yet, everything else for getting bookmarks in, marking locations, things like that, all of the framework is there. So this can all really be built on down the road. Going over to the Explore page, this is where the actual be, uh, Bluetooth beacon um, wayfinding navigation map would be. So the existing page is blank, but it can later be added down the road with the actual Bluetooth functionality. Over in our settings page, we have some different settings set up and we really work to make these as accessible as possible. So clicking on the, for example, the whole name will trigger the toggle versus just selecting the toggle itself. And we found this worked a lot better for getting people who were using a screen reader or some kind of accessibility option, a better ability to select the toggle without having to come over here and find the specific one on the right. It will read the whole name of the toggle and then read whether it's toggled on or off. Down here, we also have a level of detail selector, which is again, a radio button versus a picker because the radio button works a lot better when using accessibility options. And so you can see you can select the setting and then it updates what you're receiving directions wise. And then our last page is the help page, which is just some text to kind of bring an introduction to the app. The text is all readable by a screen reader so they can get a quick introduction. And yeah, we use the uh, four page navigation because it's pretty consistent along a lot of apps. 
And the main focus of our project was getting the UI narrowed down and getting the accessibility working. So everything here has been designed specifically to be accessible by those who are visually impaired, but it can really be used by anyone. We just did a lot of testing and a lot of coding to make sure that it's specifically accessible by as many people as possible. Well, we didn't get the Beacon implementation completely done this semester. We did get started with the SteerPath API, which is the company that we decided to go with for the Beacons. And we ended up setting up a demo in the first floor of the Albertsons Library. Um, and what you're seeing right now is a screen capture of their app, which demonstrates some of their functionality, including the ability to generate directions um, and to as you can see, dynamically update the position of the user um, in relation to those directions. So the next steps for the app would be to combine the SteerPath API with the user interface that we developed to make it accessible to people who are blind and who aren't able to see the directions um, and really just to meld the two together.